Hello and welcome back to Saving Your Ruined Campaigns. As you can see, we are going to play as Ashikaga, so a Shinto country which might be interesting after our latest video about the religions. But first of all, we have a giveaway winner from the mentioned video. So, congratulations to the Brian NP1 for winning the giveaway. Uh, please contact me via Discord and I'm going to give you chosen DLC by you. So, first of all, let's hear what is the situation. Dear Slavic, I have a ruined Ashikaga campaign. It's 1622 and I didn't even manage to form Japan. Even though I pulled out of exploit presented by the spiffing breed, that's why I'm a federal empire, not a shogunate. After the war with China, Russia attacked me for my colonies in Siberia. My armies do not stand a chance with the Russians. They have only 40,000 troops, no manpower, and I'm behind it technology as in no institutions. So, Slavik, I ask you to get out of the war with minimal territorial losses and possibly improve my army. Alright, we are in the same game, it's 17th century and we are fighting against Russia. It seems that they have just a little bit more armies than us and it's not the strongest Russia that I've ever seen, so it might not be that bad. But if you go to the ledger, you can see that us just as Ashikaga, we have 30,000 troops while Russia has 100,000 of them. And on the army quality, we are losing a lot. Well, we don't have much manpower, we have tons of money which we are not spending on the advisors, and at least our balance is great. Well, that's the only reason why our army is shit. We are tons of technologies behind. Current technologies are 18, so it means we are just 12 technologies behind. This will be demanding. And I don't think you can really win this war. And on top of that, we don't have two institutions, we don't have printing press and we don't have global trade. Yeah, probably global trade would be quicker here if we were having our centers of trade on the second level. Well, this is the war goal from the war, I'm going to try to reoccupy it and peace out Russians. That's the thing that he mentioned, uh, we are freaking feudal nobility. I would prefer independent daimyo to be honest. What is worse, we have on the fifth tier parliamentarism, which is not the best reform in my opinion right now, uh, especially for Japan. And of course we have tax instead of manpower on the second one. I will start with changing parliamentarism with stage general, we are anyway a feudal monarchy, so I can pick it and get, yes, I can get great rulers right now and our power points are nice, but we are going to work on that. Ah, of course we are wasting 2 mil points monthly on the war taxes, just cancel it. And I'm going to bring all of my advisors on level 3, because we still have tons of money even with that. Our absolute this is like 0, so I might work on the estates a little bit. I'm going to take power points from all of them, and on top of that cheaper advisors and more manpower from Bushi. Of course you should always keep the diets coming, so I'm going to get that, and it's just an easy conversion of a province for a great bonus and cheaper advisor. It seems like tons of our provinces are not stated and that's a typical bug on the current patch that in the first month when you load your save, all of the autonomy is on zero in the provinces, even though I didn't call it. So if the math will go on, this will be over 90%, so our income is lower than it thought. Yeah, you can see, as I'm staking the provinces, it's setting to 90%, it would set out this amount anyway in the next month, automatically. Yeah, and my income is just 96 with those provinces already cored, so it would be probably even less when we started. Okay, let's start the war, I'm going to reoccupy the war goal now. And now they are going around with a lot of troops, I'm going to try catch one of them, uh... Because, yeah, in the peace deal, in the peace deal they want uh, quite a few provinces from us and to release two countries. We have some army professionals, I'm going to burn it, at least 5%, and I will recruit 10,000 troops uh, because my main stack has almost only artillery. Now, as you remember from the last ruined campaign, uh, we can build spy network on the nation with way better technologies to get bonuses to the cost of it. I call it stealing the technologies. Uh, level of the isolationist is not the best for us. Of course, the best one should be the open doors, which is giving tech cost bonuses. Uh, yeah, and institution spread on adaptive would be also nice, but here is just construction cost, which I might use with our amount of money. All right, they are coming at me and I have 15,000 more troops. Uh, this is just a disaster. If you look closely how better the army is, we just don't have any chance to win this war. Of course, I could win this war, 
but I would have to go for uh, bankruptcy, so we don't want to do that. I'm just going to accept the offer and get the hell out of this war. Now there goes bonus from the mission in the deity, and as you can see I can get a very cheap advisor that will be useful to convert the promises, and the level 5 of him costs me just 6 ducats per month. Which is crazy, I'm going to also get my manpower advisor level 4. Now I was thinking that, uh, you remember that uh, particularist song from the merchant guilds, might, uh, if I accept the demands, they will increase autonomy in all the promises when I accept or I have my own character, but it turns out it gave me rebels just in a few promises, so I'm just going to let them occupy a few because of the occupy they will increase the autonomy, but I'm not going to accept the demands. I'll just decrease the autonomy wherever I can to, for the absolutism. Yeah, there is some uh, local autonomy in the promises. Trade advisor and level 3 for now. Now this fleet is just weird. It's like 22 galleys, heavy ships. I'm just going to get uh, transport ships and, uh, and a flagship to protect the trade. I could take the 15th military technology already, but you can see it cost me 800 points. Not going to happen. Uh, yeah, global trade will be problematic, so I'm just going to increase the uh, census of trade to level 2 in all of the provinces my main three nodes. Now we should think and find a province where we are going to develop printing press because it's never coming to us. And yeah, there are like gold mines now and this paper province, uh, it feels like it will be just perfect. My spy network on Russia is already giving us 8% cheaper technology. Absolutely in the meantime increased to 12, but we still need to increase it farther more and of course I'm going to also keep converting my promises to Shinto. I could take cheaper diplomatic technology, but I want to go for the open incident, not isolationist, I'm just going to take money instead. Here we definitely prefer to get merchant guilds loyal, because uh, right now they're increasing our death costs, which will be needed to get the institution. This is one of the cool events I was mentioning lately about the Shinto religion. And right now our balance is 51, and we're just spending 18 ducats on those great advisors. I'm going to start colonizing uh, over here on the south uh, because it will be an, an easy route for expansion for the player into the Philippines and Indonesia and just build the troops to deal with the natives. Another candidate, another great one and that's tons of power points. Just look 16, 12, 11. Mm, I don't need any manpower right now so I'm just going to take more money and I'll start developing the institution in the paper province once it gets to 100% of the prosperity, because on the 100% we are getting 10% death cost reduction. Now to increase my power projection at least to 30, I'm going to issue embargo on all of my rivals. It's getting there, it's 83% already. It would be great to have a university to develop the institution, but we are two technologies too behind to get this. We have 4000 ducats, which I'm going to spend on building some manufactories, and in the meantime just keep converting the provinces. Converted provinces means more manpower, more money and a better state of the country. This is a cool event, uh, it will improve relations with most of the nations around and it will give me two of the absolutes. 99% and from 47 of course it is going to decrease to 42 death costs. I'm going to add this encourage develop Addict. As for the development of the institution, I'm going to use mostly Diplo points because I'm the most ahead in this technology, and it will be once admin, once meal, and mostly deep points all the time. So there goes the institution, of course, it's not even close to embrace it yet, but once it gets to my capital Kyoto, I'm going to embrace it 100%. In the meantime, global trade is also spreading, but this will be more problematic, I feel. So, uh, to make everything fast, I'm going to turn on the advancement efforts edicts everywhere. I'm just going to get some manpower from the barracks. We have 44% of the printing press and 53 of the global trade in the capital. And uh, yeah, I think once global trade reaches Setsu, it will be way easier. Our maximum power is already 109,000 and this reminds me, yes, that we can change the government form uh, for the manpower bonus, which is going to increase that up to 123,000. There goes printing press, it reached uh, Kyoto finally, and it cost me 2.6k, uh, which I of course have. Uh, yeah, it would waste some of my powerpoints, so I'm just going to spend it first 
on having uh, some of the provinces and their goals and praise the institution. And uh, yeah, you can see I'm on the max of the mu points. So I'm just going to take the military technology uh, to because like combo threat is not here yet. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing with admin. Uh, we will wait a little bit more for the grower trade and I'm reaching my cap of the admin points already. My next idea group, I was thinking about quantity, but next military technologies who are too important for us to find China later. Uh, so I'm just picking trade ideas for better economy because we need to unite all of the trade nodes around here. I don't have time to wait for those troubles, so I'm just going to provoke them on the mountains and then turn off my armies. Whole conversion to Shinto is going great, so I need to go into another state right now. This is our biggest problem. Nothing in age of absolutism. 83 in Setsu, and from Setsu it's close to Kyoto, so we might actually... Yes, I'm going to develop the province here. And yep, one more click, and now to Kyoto it will come quickly, we almost have the whole global trade thing. We have 58,000 troops, if we want to find China, I need to build up at least 20k more, and yeah, with 76, 80,000 troops it should be enough. Here we go with the next institution, I need to take a few loans, but with arrow balance it's completely not a problem. And with the institution here I can take tons of technologies, and on the technology map mode we are even slightly green. Just uh, turn off all of the edicts to save money. If you take a look on the Mink, still the army quality is similar to ours. And uh, they have better numbers, so it will not be that easy. Anyway, I will first in 17th admin technology for all of these bonuses, and better army with the 19th military one. Just with the free merchant I'm going to send him to the Polynesian Triangle to get at least a little bit of the ducats from there. And there goes the 17th admin technology. It is uh, more admin efficiency, most importantly, and governing capacity. So the first stack that I just built, I'm going to get 10,000 more of artillery, so in total if all of our armies will be having a whole back row of it. Oh, we just lost all of the claims on Shun, so I need to prepare the new ones because I'm planning to attack them. We have just 4 loans for 2,000 to repay, with this balance it should be very quick. I'll just keep showing you how many provinces we are converting, because it will be a big impact on everything. And we are actually third great power with those institutions. Before China, our climate borders in Japan, so we need to annex those two nations here. And yes, that is what I was waiting for, 90th military technology. With China on 16th, 17th, it will be way easier. And uh, here we can piece out those nations, uh, I'm going to fully annex them, and get my troops ready to fight. We have similar numbers of troops to China, and Shun is having 50,000 on top of that. As for the stacks, I'll keep the main one with 30,000 of infantry and 30,000 of artillery. It will be stacked that is going to siege the provinces and fight enemy troops, while the rest of the armies so of 30,000 will just keep behind them and will be reinforcing the battles. Alright, let's start the war. My first move is to go into Korea and carpet siege them to get them out of the war and run away with those ships definitely. Yeah, just do the carpet siege right now and get all of the rest of the troops north. I could already white piece them, but I want to break their relations with Shun. Uh, you know, just uh, so in the future we will be able to fully annex them. There goes the first fort. My main stack will go to Beijing, while the second one will be just going behind it and carpet sieging the provinces. Just as a reminder, keep getting the dieties all the time, and this time I'm going to get another cheaper advisor for converting a single province. Of course my leader just died on the way to Beijing, uh, so I just need to recruit a new one to take care of that. SAI, like the main purpose of the game is to catch my 1k stacks instead of fighting. Uh, so I'll just organize my troops and attack them in a second. Yeah, I would like, you can see three shoe stacks here. I would like to catch just one of those three, so I'll need to get there on the 28th of June. They resigned when they should see that I'm going to catch them. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to my province. And here's another try, my main stack is going to attack on Areche, it's a uh, grassland province. And this, this battle is just a disaster for them, just, 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 just getting the they're just getting destroyed and stack wiped here. And they are coming for another one from uh, from Ink, and that's another stack wipe. So we might have another festival of the stack wipes this time. And they are trying to reach Shenyang, so we're going to do the same thing. 
and I'm hoping for another stack wave, but unfortunately they caught me in Beijing, my second stack in the meantime, and crashing them in the main battle, but they reinforced uh, that wasn't a stack wipe. There goes peace with Korea, so just break relations with Ming, and yeah, eight, eight ducats is perfect, that's all I need. Now they are bringing more and more numbers, I'm going to be up 10,000 more of troops, I have my power for that. And uh, the battle of Xinyang, that should be easy and probably a stack wipe, there it goes, they didn't have a leader. I will uh, scorch earth here and go farther, catching them in a high chunk. They can't really reinforce that because of the scorch earth in Xinyang. And I'm hoping for another, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't stack wipe them, but it's okay. But I stack wipe them in Xinyang. <laughs> now there goes another administrative technology. And with that I can pick up new idea group, which uh, it's going to be quality because we have enough of manpower for our amounts of the troops, quality will be better. So Ming, I want to piece them out separately and for all of the money, so it will take my, I probably have to uh, capture all of the lands. But as we are taking on Beijing right now, main stack is going to catch smaller stacks or even bigger, uh, while the second stack is going to capture half of China. They've lost already a hundred thousand of the troops in this war. So there goes our classic carpet siege. So if you don't know how to do that, I have a guide about this. Just type carpet siege EU4 and watch it. It's really easy and really pleasant and useful for the wars. First quality idea, that is a slight bonus to our quality of the troops. Datong is now down, so I'm going with the main stack to kill some of the troops. The first battle was close, but they reinforced that, and because of this I'll probably not carpet siege them, but we've sieged down the capital in the meantime, and they are not accepting our peace deal yet. They're actually coming with tons of troops here, so just in case I'm coming with my second stack, but yeah, that's an easy battle, and we'll have to go for the carpet siege again while the main stack will go to Xi'an. Xi'an is down, I need to take down the capital of uh, Shun, while the rest of my armies, uh, I'll have to get uh, a couple of more occupied provinces. Now they accept it, and I'm going to take 2.6 thousand of ducats from uh, Ming. This will repay my loan, and I'll be able to invest in some of the buildings. Shun is almost accepting for what I want, which is like as many provinces as possible in the Beijing trade now, this will be a huge boost to our money. With the capital down, they are of course accepting it, so take all of those provinces. I'm not going to core them, I'm going to release Yan here and feed it with those conquered provinces. I'm also getting them to my religion, so they will start converting those terrains and uh, of course giving those provinces. Now they are still disloyal, but we will just have to improve relations with this nation. I'm increasing the centers of trade in Beijing, so we will get more percentage of the trade, and I'm diverting all of the trade, which should increase my income furthermore, especially if we send a merchant from the Polynesian Triangle here. Now we have 37% of trade power on this note, and thanks to it, our income increased from 38 to 60, the trade income, so in total, our income is right now 152. I'll just start building some training fields from the money that we received. Uh, but I believe uh, that's all. We increased our income to 164, so it is practically doubled because it was around 90. In fact, at the beginning, we increased our manpower significantly. We repaired the situation with the technology. We are ahead in most of them, where we are behind uh, in 12 at the beginning. This nation is ready to fight the wars. I would suggest exploring, expanding into China, Indonesia and Philippines because fighting with Russia will not make any sense. So this safe is pretty much uh, taken care of. I would say that's the only thing that uh, the, the owner of the safe just needs to do right now is to take care of the absolutism and to keep expanding in his region to build up a really stable and strong empire. So for today that is all. I, if you enjoyed this episode please leave a like and comment. Congratulations again for the giveaway winner. So, See you soon in another episode, remember to subscribe, see ya!